<laughs> okay, I call them the uh, November 20th planning board meeting to order. On first order of business is approval of minutes from the October 16 planning board meeting. Or October 16. I am. I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes. Approve. The October 16th planning uh, board. Move to approve the October 16 minutes. Second. Any discussion? I wasn't here, so I'm going to abstain. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. It's four to one abstention. All right. Next order of business is approval of the minutes to the special workshop on October 23rd. Uh, no, excuse me, October 16th. I got so many dates here. The October 16th special workshop. I move to approve. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. <laughs> Any discussion? All yeah. those in favor? Four, four and an abstention. And the next order of business is approval of the October 23rd uh, special planning board meeting. Move to approve. Okay, a um, motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, I'll just say I believe the planting has already occurred and is complete. All right, that's great. All right, all those in favor? Okay. So we have four to one abstention. All right. We have four? Yes. Yes, Jonathan okay. did not abstain on that one. He was, he was here. <laughs> All right, next order of business is Apple Tree School Expansion Site Plan Amendment. Pamela Mullen is requesting amendments to a previously approved Apple Tree School Site Plan to expand the school located at 44 Two Lights Road from 20 to 40 children. Request a resource protection permit to alter RP2 wetland for installation of underground utilities and amend the lot lines between lots two and three of the Spinnaker Heights uh, subdivision, section 19-9 site plan public hearing, and section 19-8-3 resource protection permit public hearing, and section 16-2-5 amendments to a previously approved Subdivision public hearing, but first we'll hear from the applicant with any updates to the plan. Good evening. Uh, John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates. I represent uh, Pamela Mullen in the uh, PMC here this evening um, with the Apple Tree School. Uh, I'll just give, give a quick overview. Um, before we get into plan changes. Uh, the property is located at 44 Two Lights Road. Uh, this is lot three of a three lot subdivision known as uh, Spinnaker Heights subdivision. The lot area is 2.4 acres. It's uh, located in the residential A district. Uh, the existing structure on the property uh, consists of a single family residence, a large barn and educational classroom for the preschool. Uh, the westerly half of the property is, uh, other than the structure, is consists of open lawn areas, play areas for the school, and the existing uh, on-site disposal system located in the corner of the property. Um, there are, as, as the chairwoman mentioned, uh, we're requesting three items, uh, an amendment to a previously approved site plan, um, the, a resource protection permit, and an amended subdivision plan. Uh, I'll summarize the site plan amendment first. Uh, the school's expansion is to accommodate an increase of 20 to 40 students. Um, there's a small, uh, no, let me just go to the next slide, a small uh, 227 square foot addition um, located on the northwest side of the existing barn. 
This will consist of office space and a restroom facility. Um, vehicular circulation has been improved. We have a entrance only um, coming in from Two Lights Road and we have an exit drive coming out to the main road. Um, and we have a drop off area located right here in front of the, um, the new classroom. We have a total of 18 parking spaces, um, which is uh, considerably more than what's there now. A breakdown of the parking includes two spaces for the single family residents, six spaces for the employees of the preschool, and 10 additional spaces for parents. Uh, the second item is the summary of a resource protection permit. Um, the reason why we're requesting that is um, we're altering um, a total of 1,319 square feet of, um, of wetland, uh, primarily due to the, uh, well, the, primarily due to the, uh, the rain garden. But in addition to that, uh, we've got a uh, utility line, a sanitary sewer line that extends from the new addition to the septic tank. Um, I'll just point to, this is the existing uh, wetland right there, which was previously altered but um, approved um, a few years ago. Uh, there is no impervious surface uh, which will be placed on the, uh, the wetland and uh, in it, <clears throat> other than the rain garden, um, all the other impacts to the wetland uh, will be restored to its original condition, existing conditions, I should say. And then the third item is the amended subdivision plan. Um, the applicant uh, negotiated a small uh, acquisition of land. Um, it's a triangular piece located right here uh, with the abutter of uh, the wards, Mr. and Mrs. Ward. Um, the land area consists of approximately 1,800 square feet. And the purpose was to allow us to expand the parking area as well as the circulation aisle. So um, as a result of this, um, we're going to have to amend the Spinnaker Heights subdivision plan uh, because of the change in this property line. So that, in a nutshell, is um, a summary of our proposed uh, amendments. Um, I will, uh, I'm, re I'm re <coughs> referring to my cover letter dated November 2nd. Um, to the planning board, which uh, includes all of the revisions that we have made to the plan since our last submission. Would the board like me to go through one by one of these? Many of these are, are very minor in nature, um, but if the board wants, I will go through them. I'm looking, I'm looking. No, we're good. You're good, good. Um, I want to uh, point to one thing. Okay, I'm looking at uh, Sebago Technic Steve Harding's most recent letter dated November 14th. There were three items uh, that he pointed in this letter. Uh, the first item is in his paragraph number three, uh, was to monitor, he, he recommended monitoring the runoff from the parking lot after construction. So we have noted that, um, and um, uh, I think he's, he's concerned that after construction that there's, uh, there's no flooding near in front of the house. So that, that will be monitored. The second item is item number four on page two. Um, just a minor, uh, it was a typo. We, on the plan, had mentioned invert out. It actually was invert in. That has been corrected on the plan. And the last item is paragraph number six. Uh, 
uh, Steve Harding uh, suggested that we add a note to the sidewalk detail, noting that the detail was the, is for the purpose of repairing the brick sidewalk in front of the structure. And we have made that note. And then on uh, Maureen's memo on page three, under exterior lighting, uh, paragraph nine, um, I talked to Maureen today about uh, there's a typo in the first or second sentence, I guess. Uh, the lighting level at the property line has been measured not to exceed 0.02 foot candles. And then I, um, <coughs> another uh, point that I wanted to make was that initially in our initial submission, we had recommended a light on the sign uh, out front right here. Um, and uh, uh, Pam decided not to have that light, so there will not be a light on the, the school sign. And I think that that's all I have. Great. Thank you. I'm going to now open this to a public hearing for all three items at once. Um, is there anyone here who wishes to speak to this application? Please state your name, your address, and limit your comments to three minutes, please. Thank you. Thank you, my name is Pamela Mullen. And I'm behind this A project. little bit louder, Pam. My name is Pamela Mullen, 44 Two Lights Road, part of this project, impetus about this project. But I just wanna say thank you to Maureen and her crew, the board, for your time that you put into this. It means a lot to the community, and I appreciate that, and all the information, you've been helpful, very much so. I also wanna thank, say thank you to um, the three J's, Joe, John and Julia for all their help. I learned a lot through this process, but I especially want to make a public comment and say thank you to our neighbors, Andy and Judy Ward, for offering to let me purchase their land. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing portion and uh, turn this over to the board for their questions, comments. I'm looking to see if anybody's got questions. Go ahead, Victoria. Um, I do want to also um, say thank you to the wards because I think this is a, a better plan. It's a safer plan. Um, I like the, the way that you were able to um, put in the parking and the flow of traffic, and that was because of the wards. So I, I also want to acknowledge and thank them. And so I was reading uh, one of their um, emails, and I just wanted to make sure that um, we are answering some of the questions that they brought up, where they've been so helpful. Um, they mentioned, eventually we would welcome any appropriate plantings in the area of our land adjacent to the new property line, and we would be willing to split the cost. But do you have any plans for um, plantings in, that, in the area of the land adjacent to the new property line? love to plant, <laughs> so I can answer that happily. Yeah, so I've basically been talking to them, asking them if they want spruce trees, fir trees, hemlock, whatever, and I'm happy to put whatever they are. We're in a good agreement as neighbors, so it's okay. really what they want to do, and I'm happy to do all the work. That's great to hear, so I just wanted to make sure yeah. that question got answered. Great. That's, That's it. actually it. Thank you. Anybody else got any questions about the project? Uh, no questions, but actually I just wanted to second the change on the parking. Is a, um, seems like the flow and the amount of parking is a much better solution than what we started with. So um, uh, overall, I think it's a change and positive for sure. Thank you. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, I'm just uh, taking that a step further. I, uh, to me, this project from beginning to end has really been a fine example of a local business wanting to expand approaching the subject very carefully and thoughtfully. I think the work they've done on the, uh, the traffic flow has been, has been excellent. The site plan, uh, the site walk that we did was quite illuminating on how they're taking care of the drainage and I'm very happy to see how it's ended up. I think they've done a fine job and should be congratulated for their efforts. Thank you. 
All right, any other comments? Anybody want to make a motion? Uh, Go right ahead. Jump right in there. I was waiting for Jonathan to speak up because he likes these, he likes these long ones. But uh, just uh, when was the sidewalk? Because I don't think I was there. But. No, you weren't there. Um, I don't remember the date. No, I don't. But there was a sidewalk. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, a uh, motion for the board to consider, a motion for approval, findings of fact. One, Pam Mullen is pro proposing to expand the existing Apple Tree School <coughs> located at 44 Two Lights Road from 20 to 40 children, which requires review under section 19-9, site <coughs> land regulations, section 19-8-3, resource protection district regulations, and section 16-2-3, amendments to previously approved subdivisions. The plan for development is consistent with the natural capabilities of the site to support development. Three, access to the development <coughs> will be on roads with adequate capacity to support the traffic generated by the development. Access into and within the site will be safe. Parking will be provided in accordance with section 19-7-8 off street parking. Four, the plan does include an existing system of pedestrian ways within the development. Five, the plan does provide for adequate collection and discharge of storm water. Six, the development will not cause soil erosion based on erosion plan submitted. Seven, the development uh, will be provided with an adequate quantity and quality of potable water. Eight, the development will provide for adequate sewage disposal. Nine, the development will be provided with access to utilities. 10, the development um, will not locate, store, and discharge uh, materials harmful to surface and groundwaters. 11, the development will provide for adequate disposal of solid wastes. 12, the development will, <coughs> excuse me, not adversely affect the water quality or shoreline of any adjacent water body. 13, the applicant has demonstrated adequate technical and financial capability to complete the project. 14, the development will not materially obstruct the flow of surface or subsurface waters across or from the alteration area. 15, the development will not impound surface waters or reduce the absorptive cap capacity of the alteration area so as to cause or increase the flooding of adjacent properties. 16, the development excuse me, um, will, uh, will not increase the flow of surface waters across or discharge the surface waters from the alteration area so as to threaten injury to the alteration area or to upstream and or downstream lands by flooding, draining, erosion, sedimentation, or otherwise. 17, the development will not result in significant damage to spawning grounds or habitat for aquatic life, birds, or other wildlife. 18, the development will not pose problems related to the support of structures. 19, the development will not be detrimental to aquifer recharge or the quantity or quality of groundwater. 20, the development will not disturb coastal dunes or contiguous back dune areas. 21, the development will uh, maintain or improve ecological and aesthetic values. 22, <coughs> The development will maintain an adequate buffer area if it has not already been altered between the wetland and adjacent land uses. 23, the development will be accomplished in conformance with the erosion prevention provisions of environmental quality handbook, erosion and sediment control published by the Maine Soil and Water Conservation Commission dated March 1986 or subsequent revisions thereof. 24, the development uh, will be accomplished without discharging wastewater from buildings or other uh, construction into wastewater treatment facilities in violation of section 15-1-4 of the sewerage ordinance. And 25, the development is not located in a floodplain. Uh, 26, the subdivision amendment will not cause unreasonable road congestion or unsafe vehicular and pedestrian traffic. All lots are provided with vehicular access. 27, the subdivision amendment uh, will provide for adequate sewage disposal. 28, 
the subdivision amendment is compatible with the applicable provisions of the zoning ordinance 29. The, um, <coughs> excuse me. The application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations, section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations, and section 16-2-5 amendments to previously approved subdivisions. And therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Pam Mullen to expand the Apple Tree School located at 44 Two Lights Road from 20 to 40 children be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised to address the comments of the town engineer in his letter dated November 14, 2018. Two, that information on the sign lighting be submitted demonstrating that lighting levels will not exceed 0.5 foot candles on the property line. I think we may just want to delete that. Yeah, okay, so strike uh, what I just read being paragraph two, and the new paragraph two will read, that there be no alteration of the site or issuance of a building permit until the plans are revised to satisfy the above conditions and submitted to the town planner. Is that a second? Second. Right, Victoria seconds. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor? It's unanimous. We're all set. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is 1226 Shore Road Mixed Use Building Site Plan Amendment. Shall I read this? Um, okay. Uh, and to start, I'll have the things have things have changed slightly, so um, I will have Maureen summarize the current situation before we begin. Okay. So. I think everyone has received um, an email, excuse me, a memo that I wrote today, um, and it is intended to assist the board with getting up to speed with the status of this project right now. So when this package went out to the board and when the agenda was finalized last week, uh, some new things have come to light. Um, the main thing is that the applicant has asked for amendments to the uh, approval from October 2017, and these are amendments that staff would support because it will uh, address some issues that staff has identified. However, um, there was a lot of comments made that made us believe that a, uh, an appeal had been filed in court on the planning board approval. And if that had happened, the time frame for the approval would have stopped. The clock would have stopped on that. In fact, no appeal was ever filed, which means the one-year approval has actually run out. So there is no application tonight for the planning board to amend because the approval expired October 17, 2018. However, um, the original plan was for the applicant to come to the board tonight to show you some changes. Um, if the board deemed those complete, to, to table it to the December meeting where you would hold a public hearing on those amendments. What staff has advised the applicant in light of the recent situation is to take tonight as an opportunity to have a conversation with the planning board because it's on your agenda and you can do that to provide guidance to the applicant but not to make any motions except I did, I did draft a motion for you to actually uh, authorize staff to schedule a public hearing for next month. 
And so what the applicant is intending to do is to resubmit the entire application in time for the December 18th planning board meeting and the, the applicant will be going over what's in that application, but it would be predominantly what's already been approved by this board. And the idea would be that if the board is satisfied at the December 18th meeting, you could deem that brand new application complete, you could hold a public hearing, and then you could consider a vote for reapproval, which would bring everything back to current and in line with our current deadlines. Is there any questions on that? Okay. All right. Go right ahead, introduce yourself and give us the highlights here. Okay, I'm Catherine Detmer with Archetype Architects and I am here with 1226 Shore Road again. It's been a while, but um, it's located out behind your building here. There are two buildings on the property. We came to you originally with building A that we are looking to demolish. Um, the existing building reuse some of the foundation and then go up for three stories and we have living units on top and then offices and a retail slash restaurant on the first floor. Then we had some new parking area, and then in the back we have building B, which is an existing building out there. I'm just going to go over some items that have been in question throughout the time. I think that Bill Hopkins actually talked to you about some of this, but I'll try and go through it quickly. Um, one of the items in question, this is the one time we're gonna talk about building A, which is the one we're actually making changes to. There is currently a kitchen in the basement of building A. And um, to clarify, we didn't have this drawing originally. We are demoing that kitchen and demoing all of the partitions down there. And in fact, all of this foundation is to be redone because there is block foundation and then poured. And we're gonna make it all poured foundation. And when that goes away, what we have in its place is that the whole basement of Building A is going to be storage. Each unit, each residential unit gets storage as well as the offices and the restaurant retail. Um, it was pointed out that I did not have some of these rooms marked as storage. Uh, I've changed that and bubbled it. They are marked as storage now to clarify. Then we go to Building B. Um, originally, our office was given a site plan that we scaled and measured to get the size of this building for the parking calculations. It turns out the building was not built as it was drawn in that site plan, so we apologize. We had the wrong information originally. We were then given the correct um, drawings for the building and we verified them. And uh, so this is just showing the actual square footage of Building B. We have the first floor here um, measured as it's called out for in the zoning guide by Cape Elizabeth. Um, so we're showing our total square footage down here. I don't need to go through all the numbers here, but um, second floor, we have some office space and then storage space. That's how the, cur the current owner wants to use that space. Um, but what happens is when we run those numbers, the parking calc actually changes. Um, I'm gonna zoom in on that in just a second. And then I also am noting here, there was a question um, in the, in the, original, uh, in the original approval, there were some conditions and some items that had to be met and fixed, and one of them was uh, note number six, that a note on this site plan needed to be changed. And I will zoom in again, that has been changed on the site plan. But what happens now, when you look at the parking calculations, originally the front building, we were getting, uh, we were requesting four shared spaces to meet the needs of that building. We thought that the back building had three standard and two garage spaces so that we only needed five based on the calculations when the square footage grew. Um, based on what's actually there, we do need an additional space. So we are now requesting one additional shared space for the entire project, bringing us to five shared spaces. Um, that parking calculation table has been updated on the site plan. And then there are those two notes that were asked to be done on uh, condition six for the size of the evergreens behind the garage as well as noting this buffer over here. There we go. And then the final item is that in building B, there is a kitchen. Um, it's an existing kitchen, but it was deemed by the planning board that it was a kitchen that's out of scale with what would be appropriate for an office use. So we are now, we have a plan here that removes the range, it removes the dishwasher, and it removes the uh, full-size refrigerator. 
you um, put end panels on either side and then where the range was, we put in a half size fridge underneath. So we're trying to bring that kitchen down to scale with what would be appropriate for an office. We do put kitchens in most of our offices. We have one. So we, we believe that this would be an appropriate scale one. And then I just want to touch on one last item that was brought to my attention. It came into question whether there would need to be accessibility to this building because there's office space on the second floor. Um, I have a long write-up explaining this in the code, but um, this building now falls under the 2015 International Existing Building Code. Um, whenever you have a change of occupancy, it does state that you have to go to certain sections in terms of accessibility. And it says that an altered space requires an accessible route, um, but if it, has, if it has an area of primary function, so there is the office space. But there is an exception to that, and it states that the cost of providing the accessible route is not required to exceed 20% of the cost of the alteration affecting that area of primary function. And if you look at this, the work that we're doing is removing a couple of um, items from the kitchen and replacing one. So 20% of that cost is not going to justify putting an elevator into that small area on the second floor according to how the code goes. We did call IBC to confirm that they read this the same way we do, but I can include this when I come back with the final approval. Um, so that's, that's the stuff I'm trying to clear up for you tonight. Let me know if you have any questions about it. Any questions? Go ahead, Jonathan. Do you just have a time frame on the demolition of uh, the kitchen in both buildings A and B? I don't have an answer for that right now, but I could get you an answer. I'm not sure what the plan is. All right, thanks. Any other questions? Um, I've been, sorry. I've been trying to figure out, and maybe this is beyond the purview, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to make sense of these plans, mostly just, just from reading it architecturally. But I'm also trying to figure out, there is a, a lot of storage here, and I'm trying to figure out how how's that, I mean, I see you have the restaurant, you have one office, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> at least six, seven, eight storage spaces. Yeah, there are eight um, <laughs> apartments above. There are two uh, floors of apartments, and each apartment gets a storage okay. space as well. All right, I, I, uh, I'm trying to. Sorry, when I come back in December, I'll show the full building again, just since it's a reapproval. Um, so yeah, I actually have it on a thumb drive. If Mr. Mr. Gilbert wasn't on the board yeah. for the original approval. Yeah, so that's, that's. I do have it here. I brought the original presentation. If you want me to show it, or I can show um, it in December. Yeah, if you don't mind putting it up, just so I can, because uh, it's hard to put this all together. And no, this if you this um, set tonight does not explain the project in its entirety. It would just help me if I get stuff sent ahead of it to maybe wrap my mind around this a little better. I'll, yeah, I'll be submitting the full set, 14 sets, by the end of next week. So. I just has one question Go ahead. related to that. Um, are you making any other changes uh, or significant changes uh, from the original approval? No. It, everything's the same. We're just trying to clear up these questions, mostly on building B and then um, showing the demo plan for that kitchen. I'm not sure where this shows up on here. It's flashing like it should be. Um, reading. The U-disc on the far right. Okay, so here is the first floor, um, and as you were looking at there, what did I just, that's the laser. We have our retail restaurant space, we have one office space here, and then we actually have a large office space here. And you've got your two stairwells and your elevator with the core. And then when you go up, we have two floors that each have four units on them. Um, I, I haven't looked at this in a while. I think they're all two bedroom. So every unit gets its own small storage and then it's a pretty large office here so that one gets yep. a big storage in the basement and this gets a smaller one and then the retail. Uh, I have some renderings here.
so that we're well, that yeah, makes we're, a lot more sense yeah <laughs> <laughs> i could not figure it out i was like why is there eight story there's one office yeah, and no, a no, tiny the restaurant building's going up quite a bit okay yes thanks okay anything else Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, this goes into the category of trivia, but I want to make the point anyway. When your client was in here last, um, I made the point to your colleague, I think from your firm as well, that I thought it would show some respect for the neighbors and for the town center district if they tried to at least keep the grass cut down to a couple of inches. It was just, you know, grew up high and it, it looked pretty terrible. And they, they said they would do something they haven't. I don't know when you're planning to start, but I would simply like to recommend to your client that they spend a few bucks, get a local kid with a lawnmower, and try to make the the lawn areas just look decent. I will pass you, on that. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Anything else? Um, I have a question. In light of the. In light of the fact we will very likely have a public hearing on this in December, do we want to do a site walk between now and when they have to submit the plans and, and site walk for building B, which we did not view last time? We went into A, but we didn't do B, and I'm just asking. No? Uh, the only question I have is, uh, is there going to be do you think there's, you said that you didn't know the time frame for the demolition in building B, um, but do you think it would be in time for a site walk? I'm Is sure it, we can make time for a site walk. Well, no, I mean it, the, the demolition of the kitchen area and building B, if that would be done by the time in the next couple weeks. My guess is no, but I can find out. Okay. Uh, I just don't see much need for a site walk. Okay. Just, see, that's, that's fine. Just, me right now. just wanted to throw that out as an idea. You're fine? Mm -hmm. All right. So, no site walk. <laughs> is there any. So, and your submission, your submission next week will take care of a lot of these conditions. They will become part of. The All of the conditions had been met except for that one that I brought up there on the site plan. I believe that Maureen has acknowledged that everything so. else has been dealt with. So I'll be resubmitting the renderings, the plans, right. but then the updated sets to go with that. Yep, and we'll see everything yeah. all combined in. Yep, That's exactly. good. All right. Uh, does anyone want to make a motion? I have a motion. Go ahead. Uh, be it ordered that the planning board will consider an expedited, uh, or excuse me, expedited review of the 1226 Shore Road mixed use site plan, including scheduling a public hearing at the December 18, 2018 meeting. Do you have a second? I'll second. We'll give it to Peter. He raised his hand. <laughs> All right. Before she said, before Victoria Quite said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any further discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks. Do you need that? I have it on my computer at home. All right. Thank you. Do we have anything else? We're good. Do I have a motion? Move to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Victoria, raise your hand. I'd like to second. Okay, all those in favor? It's unanimous. All right, thank you.